I want to start off with making a declaration to all of those who benefit and all of those who are perpetrators of this organized harassment against targeted individuals. All perpetrators of organized harassment are in violation of United States Code 241, Title 18, Conspiracy Against Rights of Targeted Individuals. If two or more persons conspire to injure, oppress, threaten, or intimidate any person in any state, territory, commonwealth, possession, or district in the free exercise or enjoyment of any right or privilege secured to him or her by the Constitution or laws of the United States, or because of his having so exercised the same, or if two or more persons go in disguise on the highway or on the premises of another with intent to prevent or hinder his free exercise or enjoyment of any right or privilege so secured, they shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than 10 years or both. And if death results from the acts committed or if such acts include kidnapping or an attempt to kidnap, aggravated sexual abuse, or any attempt to commit aggravated sexual abuse or an attempt to kill they shall be fined under this title or imprisoned for any term of years or for life or both or may be sentenced to death title 18 United States Code 241 How you doing, officer? How you doing, brother? I'm recording for my safety and your sure. safety. Not a big deal, brother. So, Go ahead uh, and record away. Well, the reason I pulled you over, I noticed your uh, license plate light was out in the back. Is it? It is, yeah. Okay. Um, do you do you have your driver's license registration? I actually do. Um, how are we gonna do this? Because I have a heavy cloak on me, and I don't want you to think Where I'm reaching for a weapon. No big deal. You can put the phone down. It's still recording, so it'll still pick yeah. up audio. I'm recording as well. Okay. Oh, are you? I am. Okay, cool. I live down the street. You guys know about me. I'm I'm one of your I targets will. for, uh, you know, covert harassment. I've been harassed for like the last six months now. Helicopters, police, undercovers, and everything. Undercover so. and everything. Yeah, cool. I want to go see one of my other friends who is also a targeted individual. So. Is he? Yeah. Uh, listen, you know, we don't, we don't target for any reason. We're just out here. Well, you know, the thing is, it's one thing to investigate someone. It's another thing to harass them, you know, where you have neighbors participating in this nonsense, this noise campaign and all these crazy things. Anyways, I don't want to get into that. I'll, I'll talk to the FBI about that. I already oh, addressed them. So, yeah. I mean, you guys should know about me. I was actually thinking about coming in today mm -hmm. uh, and talking to you guys about you know all this nonsense that's been going on in my in my cul-de-sac where one of my neighbors is actually a police officer from San Bernardino cool. and he's involved in this harassment and you would think that the government is there to protect us but yet you guys are violating the, the eighth amendment you know and uh subjecting us to extrajudicial punishment such as what such as covert harassment you know you got FBI DHS aircraft flying overhead look like I said it's one thing to investigate me Sure. And it's another thing to harass me. Welcome to Stasi America, everyone. Right. 
this is not air stocking, I don't know what it is, guys. This thing has been circling around the house for like 15 times in a row now. If this is not air stocking, I don't know what is, guys. This is fucking abuse. Wasting our tax money on bullshit. There it is, guys. That's proof. This is three times in a row, guys. Running the nose. People are seriously wasting our fucking tax dollars and bullshit. They want to say, want to keep us safe and all that BS. But in reality, they're harassing innocent people. Look at this little fucking helicopter pointing a light on me. I'm recording this shit. Fucking piece of this shit. Go back to Europe. Go back to Europe. Go back to Europe. There they go, scanning my brain. There it goes. So I'm over here enjoying myself up in this beautiful park. And then you have all white Kim Trail airline, the FBI, NSA, DHS, and CIA spy planes flying overhead. I don't know if you can see that. We have stalkers pulling up with no plates, looking away as usual. We have a uh, the uh, dog walker over there man this country's going to shit bro <laughs> real talk man you got Stasi police officers everywhere undercovers around there DHS FBI yeah. spy planes everywhere you go bro <laughs> talk about you know Stasi Germany <laughs> I feel bad for the future generations F-16, baby. Yeah, it's martial law. Huh? Martial law, this country's going to shit. So, holy. Shit. 
show thyself. Oh, beautiful man. Show thyself. I thought you were just another, you know, gang stalker hitting me with their high beams. I, I'm being hit with noise campaigns and, and all these different, you know, covert tactics to get me to go crazy, you know? Why, why would you go crazy? Crazy in the sense that, you know, you're being subject to MKO to mind control tactics. I'm Christy Nicola, born July of 1962, rendering me 32 years of age. I was a subject in radiation as well as mind control and drug experiments performed by a man I knew as Dr. Green. My parents were divorced around 1966 and Donald Richard Ebner, my natural father, was involved with Dr. Green in the experiments. I was a subject from 1966 to 1976. Dr. Green performed radiation experiments on me in 1970, focusing on my neck throat and chest, 1972 focusing on my chest and my uterus in 1975. Each time I became dizzy, nauseous and threw up. All these experiments were performed on me in conjunction with mind control techniques and drugs in Tucson, Arizona. Dr. Green was using me mostly as a mind control subject from 1966 to 1973. His objective was to gain control of my mind and train me to be a spy assassin. The first significant memory took place at Kansas City University in 1966. Don Ebner took me there by plane when my mom was out of town. I was in what looked like a laboratory and there seemed to be other children. I was strapped down, naked, spread eagle, on a table, on my back. Dr. Green had electrodes on my body, including my head. He used what looked like an overhead projector and repeatedly said he was burning different images into my brain while a red light flashed aimed at my forehead. In between each sequence, he used electric shock on my body and told me to go deeper and deeper, deeper while repeating each image would go deeper into my brain and I would do whatever he told me to do. I felt drugged because he had given me a shot before he started the procedure. When it was over, he gave me another shot. The next thing I remember, I was with my grandparents again in Tucson, Arizona. I was four years old. You can see from this experiment that Dr. Green used trauma, drugs, post-hypnotic suggestion, and more trauma in an effort to gain total control of my mind. He used me in radiation experiments, both for the purposes of determining the effects of radiation on various parts of my body and to terrorize me as an additional trauma in the mind control experiments. The rest of the experiments took place in Tucson, Arizona, out in the desert. I was taught how to pick locks, be secretive, use my photographic memory, and a technique to withhold information by repeating numbers to myself. Dr. Green moved on to wanting me to kill dolls that look like real children. I stabbed a doll with a spear once after being severely traumatized, but the next time I refused. He used many pain induction techniques, but as I got older, I resisted more and more. He often tied me down in a cage, which was near his office. Between 1972 and 1976, he and his assistants were sometimes careless and left the cage unlocked. Whenever physically possible, 
I snuck into his office and found files with reports and memos addressed to CIA and military personnel. Included in these files were project, subproject, subject, and experiment names with some code numbers for radiation and mind control experiments, which I have submitted in your written documentation. I was caught twice, and Dr. Green ruthlessly used electric shock drugs, spun me on a table, put shots in my stomach, in my back, dislocated my joints, and hypnotic techniques to make me feel crazy and suicidal. Because of my rebellion and growing lack of cooperation, they gave up on me as a spy assassin. Consequently, the last two years, 1974 to 1976, Dr. Green used various mind control techniques to reverse the spy assassin messages to self-destruct and death messages. His purpose, he wanted me dead and I struggled to stay alive all of my adult life, all of my adult life. I believe it is by the grace of God that I am still alive. These horrible experiments have profoundly affected my life. I developed multiple personality disorder because Dr. Green's goal was to split my mind into as many parts as possible so he could control me totally. He failed, but I've had to endure years of constant physical, mental, and emotional pain even to this day. I've been in therapy consistently for 12 years, and it wasn't until I found my current therapist two and a half years ago who had knowledge of the mind control experiments that I've finally been able to make real progress and begin to heal. In closing, I ask that you keep in mind that the memories I've described are but a glimpse of the countless others that took place over the 10 years between 1966 and 1976. That they weren't just radiation, but mind control and drug experiments as well. I have included more detailed information of what I remember in your written documentation. Please help us by recommending an investigation and making the information available so that therapists and other mental health professionals can help more people like myself. Good afternoon. Between the years of 1957 and 1984, I became a pawn in a government scheme whose ultimate goal was mind control and to create the perfect spy, all for the use of chemicals, radiation, drugs, hypnosis, electric shock, isolation in tubs of water, sleep deprivation, brainwashing, verbal, physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. I was exploited unwittingly for nearly three decades of my life, and the only explanations given to me were that, quote, the end justifies the means, and, quote, I was serving my country in their bold effort to fight communism. I can only summarize my circumstances by saying they took an already abused seven-year-old child and compounded my suffering beyond belief. The saddest part is, I know for a fact that I was not alone. There were countless other children in my same situation, and there was no one to help us until now. I've already submitted as much information as possible, including conversations uh, overheard of the people, agencies responsible, I'm able to report all this to you in such detail because of my photographic memory and the arrogance of the doctors, the arrogance of the people involved. They were certain they would always control my mind. Although the process of recalling these atrocities is not an easy one, nor is it without some danger to myself and my family, I feel the risk is worth taking. Dr. L. Wilson Green, who claimed to have received $50 million from the Edgewood Chemical and Radiology Laboratory, as part of the t TSD, or Technical Science Division of the CIA, once described to Dr. Charles Brown that, quote, children were used as subjects because they were more fun to work with and cheaper, too. They needed lower profile subjects than soldiers or government people, so only young willing females would do. Besides, he said, I like scaring them. They in the agency think I'm a god, creating subjects and experiments for whatever deviant purposes Sid and James can think up, Sid being Dr. Sidney Gottlieb, James, Dr. James Hamilton. In 1958, I was to be tested, they told me, by some important doctors by, from the society, or the Human Ecology Society, and I was instructed to cooperate. 
I was told not to look at anyone's faces and not to try hard not to ignore to try hard not to ignore any names, as this was a very secret project. But I was told to be brave and all these things would help me forget. Naturally, as most children do, I did the opposite and remembered as much as I could. But Dr. John Gittinger tested me, Dr. Cameron gave me the shocks, and Dr. Green the x-rays. Then I was told by Sid Gottlieb that, quote, I was right for the big A, or meaning artichoke. By the time I left to go home, just like every time from then on, I would remember only whatever explanations Dr. Robert G. Heath at Tulane Medical University gave me for the odd bruises, needle marks, burns on my head, fingers, and even the genital soreness. I had no reason to believe otherwise. They had already begun to control my mind. The next year, I was sent to a lodge in Maryland called Deep Creek Cabins to learn how to sexually please men. I was taught how to coerce them into talking about themselves, and it was, doc it was uh, Richard Helms, who was Deputy D Director of the CIA, Dr. Gottlieb, uh, Captain George White, Morris Allen, who all planned on filming as many high government agency officials and heads of academic institutions and foundations as possible, so that later when the fun funding for mind control and radiation started to dwindle, projects would continue. I was used to entrap many unwitting men, including themselves, all with the use of a hidden camera. I was only nine years old when the sexual humiliation began. I overheard conversations about a part of the agency called ORD, which I found out was Office of Research and Development. It was run by Dr. Green, Dr. Stephen Aldrich, Martin Orne, and Morris Allen. Once a crude remark was made by Dr. Gottlieb about a certain possible leak over New Orleans East involving a large group of retarded children who are being given massive doses of radiation. He asked, why was Wilson so worried about a few retarded kids? After all, they would be the least likely to spill the beans. Another time, I heard Dr. Martin Orne, who was the director then of the scientific office and later the head of the Institute for Experimental Research, state that, quote, in order to keep more funding coming from different sources for radiation and mind control projects, he suggested stepping up the amounts of stressors used and also the blackmail portion of the experiments. He said it needed to be done faster than to get rid of the subjects or they were asking for us to come back later and haunt them with our rem remembrances. There's much more I could tell you about government-sponsored research, including project names, sub-project numbers, people involved, facilities used, tests, and other forms of pain induction. But I think I've given more than enough information to recommend further investigation of all the mind control projects, especially as they involve so much use of the radiation. I would love nothing more than to say that I dreamed all this up and need just to forget it. But that would be a tragic mistake. It would also be a lie. All these atrocities did occur to me and to countless other children, and all under the guise of defending our country. It is because of the cumulative effects of exposure to radiation, chemicals, drugs, pain, and subsequent mental and physical distress that I've been robbed of the ability to work and even to bear any children of my own. It is blatantly obvious that none of this was needed, nor should it ever have been allowed to take place at all. And the only means we have to seek out the awful truth and bring it to light is by opening whatever files remain on all the projects and through another presidential commission on mind control. I believe that every citizen of this nation has the right to know just what is fact and what is fiction. It is our greatest protection against the possibility of this ever happening again. In conclusion, I can offer you no more than what I've given you today, the truth. Did you know that there is a step-by-step -step manual um, of traumatization out there that exists <laughs> for how to traumatize someone up to the point where you can mind control them? It's called the Illuminati formula to create undetectable mind control slaves. Isn't that Christian? Isn't that moral? Here it is. This is only volume two, guys. 
So this book itself cost me a hundred dollars, and it's only one volume, and it's it's a pretty fat book. So tons and tons of information, excuse me, um, exists out there. But there's a guideline on how to, you know, traumatize someone or pretty much overwhelm them to the point where you can control them mentally. You know, you can have full control over them. It's insane, man. I didn't believe it when I first heard of it. I started doing my research. I was blown away, you know. So going over the uh, table of contents on this book, the titles are, are giveaways and revealing so much. For instance, the, the title of chapter one is The Selection and Preparation of the Victim. What kind of shit is this? You know, A through J and A being genetics and Disassociative abilities, <laughs> B availability, availability. That's some predator shit right there. Physical and mental requirements. See, so there's a a system that exists out there that these criminals use to select their targets. Obviously, it's based on a lot of things, and if you so happen to meet th those requirements and um, you're qualifiable, you might be the next targeted individual. Uh, before I move on to the title of chapter two, um, I would like to specify something very important. Uh, letter J in uh, the selection and preparation of the victim see it says here trauma by premature birth I was a premature child I qualify right there you know anyways going into chapter 2 the traumatization and torture of the victim uh, B what trauma does the creation of PTSD and DID or MPD C how the torture is carried out and types of trauma. D, the MPD works. E, the core. F, the anchoring experience. This fucking crazy shit, man. Anyways, um, chapter three, the use of drugs. You know, a lot of targeted individuals out there are being uh, drug unknowingly. So they actually have a list of certain drugs that they love to use on MK Ultra victims. Um, keep in mind that MK Ultra has evolved since its creation to a more sophisticated version being used against targeted individuals today. So we have to master this this information. We have to know all of their secrets guys and, and how, so that we can what? So that we can find a, a comeback and uh, undo ourselves from these artificial ailments and um, start to do some, you know, recovery. I don't know if you can hear, but I'm actually being air stalked as I'm making this video. We have a helicopter hovering um, slightly at a distance, but it's still nearby. So I just want to apologize to my audience for all of the ambient noise. <clears throat> so yeah, going on to uh, chapter 4 of this book, the use of hypnosis. A. Disassociation. Trance. And its historical use. B. How to program with hypnosis. C. How to boost creativity of victim with hypnosis. D, and again, think about it, they can traumatize somebody to the point where, and, and this book, as, as horrible as it sounds, this book actually talks about it. And you'll learn all about it in, in this material. How they can traumatize a child to, and train a child to stab a doll repeatedly 
um, and, and I guess coax the mind to respond um, in a calculated manner to certain stimuli and they'll traumatize the child uh, consecutively you know to the point where eventually the child is not only stabbing the the doll a certain way but is now a trained assassin Dr. Green moved on to wanting me to kill dolls that look like real children. I stabbed a doll with a spear once after being severely traumatized. And what they'll do oftentimes is um, they'll repeat the same scenario, cause the child to be triggered, and the child goes out, but instead of it being, you know, a doll, it's an actual child. And so now the child has been put in a predicament where, and keep in mind, the mind is just reacting to the trauma, is not going out there to murder another child. And think about what that does psychologically to the child. To grow up knowing that they killed another child and out of desperation and... Uh, a seeking uh, immediate relief from the tortures they themselves are enduring. It's a sick program, man. It's it's the epitome of evil, in my opinion. And everyone must know about this stuff. This is very real. Since 1953, the government has been conducting a top-secret mind control program to create super soldiers. These sleeper agents live among us, waiting to be activated. They could be your friend, your family, or the person you least expect. Cherry Progressive, listen. Mandelbrot set is in motion. Echo Crisis has been reached. Cherry Progressive, listen. Cherry Progressive! Is that a lyric from something? Do you want your soup? Hey, stop Stop doing stuff to my car. Hey, babes, what's up? Hey, I just killed two people. <laughs> That's awesome. No, they had guns and knives and they were being like total dicks. <laughs> I took a spoon and I just like, mm, I like shoved it through this guy. Agent Hal has been activated. He killed two operatives with a spoon. A spoon? What? Lock it down. We go in and we take him out. What if I'm like a robot? How do you feel? I feel kind of amazing. Like for instance, ever hear about those TIs that go out there and, and do mass shootings uh, or committing or end up committing suicide or, or do something out of their character? November 20th, 2014. It's a day many will never forget in Tallahassee and beyond. What started out as a night of studying in a college library turned to tragedy because of one man, Myron May may believed he was a victim of gang stalking. Well, tonight you'll hear from May in his own chilling words, pleading for anyone to understand him as we examine just what is gang stalking. Kind of my last words. Um, it's really unfortunate that I have to make this video. You see, I am a victim of covert harassment. Uh, and electronic harassment and gang stalking. Uh, I'm what's called a targeted individual. On November 20th, 2014, 31-year-old Byron May walks into Strozier Library on the campus of Florida State University and opens fire. Three people are injured. May tries to leave campus and a shootout with police in front of the library ends violently. The medical examiner confirming May was shot 24 times by police. Uh, the goal of gang stalking is literally uh, to drive a targeted individual crazy. They employ isolation tactics. Um, they basically try to convince your family, your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers uh, that they should be keeping an eye on you. A constant bout of noise that is never ending is designed to keep the targeted individual on edge. I am totally not crazy. I'm, I'm completely sane, but they've employed these tactics against me as well. 
to try to make me appear uh, to be a crazy person. Yeah, guys, they're being subject to the same uh, psychological warfare techniques found in this material that um, is responsible for a lot of these created events. Um, sadly, by the FBI and CIA themselves. We of the FBI feel that we're a part of a team to make America a great and decent place in which to live. There is um, so much in here. Uh, there's a, even, I think, chapter 7 or chapter 6 is dedicated to electricity and uh, the implementation of electronics, um, manipulation, um, mind manipulation by psychological programming methods, behavioral modification, psychological motivation. It's insane, guys. Spiritual control techniques. Possession and trenses. You remember that guy at uh, the Aurora uh, Edwards Theater? massacre in uh, I think it was in Colorado uh, who thought he was um, the Joker he was I think he even had painted his his hair orange and um, you know the guy was in a trance he was possessed you know by a demon call it what you will the typically you have a right to be advised of the charges you have a right to be advised of the charges. The duty judge has made a preliminary determination of probable cause to believe you committed the offense of first degree murder, which is a class one felony under Colorado law. Thank you. Judge, uh, we tendered to the prosecution this morning uh, defense motions five and six, which are notice of indication of all statutory and constitutional rights and privileges and revocation of any and all previously given waivers or privileges and uh, motion six, motion to allow confidential defense experts to be present for scientific testing of evidence. Um, with regard to, to pleading five, uh, we're just asserting all of Mr. Holmes' constitutional rights, and this is just a notice of that. Uh, with regard to the, any scientific testing, I think that uh, we're not really at that stage yet, but we uh, are filing this in abundance of caution if I can approach the bench. You might. Keep in mind that this guy's father was, um, I believe he was in the military uh, or had government ties of some kind. But yeah, when you see this guy in court, you can tell he's been drugged and he's in the trends and he has no idea what the fuck is happening. That's MK Ultra for you guys. This is how this stuff works. This stuff is very real and um, it's time for us to become fully aware of the serious crime and violation of human rights. Thousands of government-sponsored experiments did take place at hospitals, universities, and military bases around our nation. The goal was to understand the effects of radiation exposure on the human body. While most of the tests were ethical by any standards, some were unethical, not only by today's standards, but by the standards of the time in which they were conducted. They failed both the test of our national values and the test of humanity. Informed consent means your doctor tells you the risk of the treatment you are about to undergo. In too many cases, informed consent was withheld. Americans were kept in the dark about the effects of what was being done to them. The deception extended beyond the test subjects themselves to encompass their families and the American people as a whole. For these experiments were kept secret, and they were shrouded not for a compelling reason of national security, but for the simple fear of embarrassment. And that was wrong. So today, on behalf of another generation of American leaders and another generation of American citizens, the United States of America offers a sincere apology to those of our citizens who were subjected to these experiments, to their families, and to their communities. You saw, you know, I used to be a guard, you know, I used to work with you guys in uh, Long Beach. Who? Cool. At the Queen Mary, I used to work as a guard. And so, like, I know what this is all about, and 
I'm well informed. I understand that you guys have a right to investigate. But like I said, there's a thin line between investigating and then harassing someone mm -hmm. and trying to push them to the point to to do something out of their character. You know, I'm already going through a lot. I done, I done lost my job. I lost my girlfriend. I lost a lot of things in my life. And I'm going through a lot. And it seems that there is a corporate behind the scenes trying to further compound my issues, sure. you know, to push me to do something out of my character. And that's why you have me driving around a tunnel because I'm investigating you guys too.